It is time now for your Premier League update. A very busy day on this day. Homage for to Robbie Earl and Robbie Musto. We start with a London derby. Arsenal trying to snap a three-game losing streak in the league, taking on Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. A good start for Arsenal, Robbie Earl. Yeah, 30 minutes on, on the clock, and they win the ball and just play it out of danger. And Eddie Nketiah just chases Christensen to see what's going to happen and get fortune. And then he's controlled, he's calm, he finds the back of the net. And from Chelsea's point of view, it was a real nightmare goal to concede. First goal in over a year in the Premier League for Nketiah. Here, Christensen, I'm not sure he's playing it back to his goalkeeper or his other defender there. And Nketiah gets in and Christensen knows, note to myself, I must do better next time around. But Nketiah, now as a centre forward, just needs to hold possession for the rest of his team. Arsenal can't get out because he's given the ball away and it finds its way to Timo Werner. Werner's in good form, four goals in his last four appearances, all competition. Big deflection here off Jacker. Ramsdale can't get to the ball. Chelsea get back into the game at 1-1. And then we saw a beautiful goal by Arsenal, built up on this near side by Saka, who gave Alonso and saw problems. And when the ball finds its way to Smith Rowe, that is a really good finish by a young man. And this almost starts back in Arsenal's defending third again. Well, maybe a little bit romantic going back to almost the Arsene Wenger days where it was lots of forward passing, good movement on the ball, and then they work it to the 18-yard box, and Emil Smith-Rowe gets himself double figures for the season with a beautiful finish, steered into the back of the net. Arsenal go 2-1 up. And we disappointed again to allow Chelsea back into the game. And it's basic defending that lets them down. This time they regain the ball here, and when the ball's played in at the far post, Aspilicueta sneaks in. Now, Tavares, the pullback here, has got to deal with Aspilicueta. He's got him in his sights, there's no problem there. And then as the ball comes in, Tavares has got to make sure he gets there first. He doesn't, Aspilicueta gets there, Chelsea get back level, 2-2 at the break. So 2-2 at the break, we talked about Enketi at first Premier League goal in over a year. Didn't take even a half to get his next. <laughs> I know. And again, it was a, 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 just a, a, a bad mistake from Aspilicueta. Gives the ball away and just persistence there from Eddie Nketiah. Just gets a couple of ricochets, takes advantage. But again, here, this we saw this from Chelsea a lot today. We don't normally see such sloppiness from them playing out. But then it's all about the youngster, the young Arsenal striker there. Good turn initially. Gets a little bit of fortune a couple of times. But there you go, he takes it and pokes it past the goalkeeper. So Arsenal had this game pretty much well in hand. They got a little bit of a break here too late. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty quick. He's trying he's try to get, get his arm away. Saka, Saka does, he feels the arm there and says, oh, I'll have a bit of that. Yeah, you keep it there. And he grabs it. He doesn't allow us pretty quick to take his arm away, which Chelsea Devent is trying to do. He's trying to take it away now. He's not allowed to do that by Saka. It's just very... I, I'm, <laughs> It's a, it's, a, it's a clear error for me, but I guess in the VAR, you've got to know what you're looking for and realise what Saka was doing there. It didn't affect the result of the game. It's well taken by uh, Saka. That's a 10th Premier League goal for him and a very, very good performance and win for Arsenal. Yeah, snapping that three-game losing streak in the league. Arsenal getting the win over their London rivals. That race for a Champions League spot is on for Arsenal. You see currently in fifth. They're level on points with fourth place Tottenham. They get to play Tottenham in the North London Derby coming up May 12th. Their next one against Manchester United, who's currently in sixth. That's coming up on Saturday. So some big remaining fixtures for Arsenal and their manager, Mikel Arteta. Mikel, when we spoke pre-match, you said your main concern was, look, we've just got to be more critical in front of goal. We've got to be on target. Did you expect that? No, but these London derbies are like that. The way they started the game, uh, it was tactically really demanding. Um, they constantly change the shape, positioning, and, and we have to adapt. Uh, we managed to grab a little bit the game. Uh, we look dangerous all the time in, in, in the counter. When we're arriving in the final third, uh, we always looked a threat, scored four goals, conceded two. What else? After two difficult weeks um, is a great day. How many times did you change shape? Because you started with a five, then went to a four, and then it was a hybrid. Uh, but, uh, we were expecting uh, a lot of changes there, and we had to have the flexibility. And so we had, we needed the personnel to be able to be flexible, adapt, and, and change things that could work in our favour. And um, yeah, it was demanding for the players to understand a few things, but uh, I think they've done it really well. What would you say about Eddie Nketiah's performance tonight? Not just his goals, but his work rate off of the ball. 
what I've been saying all the time about Eddie, when you look at him in training, how he behaves and and how humble and hungry he is at the same time, um, good things happen. Good things happen to good people, the same as Mohamed and Lenny and Rob Holding. If you see the training session they did on Sunday after we lost against Southampton, uh, this is why we won the game today, in my opinion. And Ketia's display tonight, does that prove his commitment is here right now, even if his future is uncertain? He has proven that all the season. And... Um, and he hasn't given any signs of anything absolutely different. So um, if I'm happy for someone, it's especially him because I know what he's been through. What did you say to the players at half-time? Because you've been pegged back twice. That we had to stay in the game, and the game was there for the taking. The shape they were playing had um, a lot of risk as well, a lot of spaces for us to, to be used. We had to improve in one or two things that we weren't doing well enough, but uh, the game was there, and physically we knew as well that they played two days ago, and, um, and we could end up um, on top of that in the second half. Your smile when you walked in the room tells us how happy you are. But what do you like the most tonight? What I love is the spirit of these players. And when you lose matches, you get punched and uh, you get criticised. But for these players, I don't care because it's so worth it. Uh, they are phenomenal people. And, um, and as a group, they are really growing and they're really enjoying to, to have that. And then for our people, because I know that with all the hypes and, and the, <laughs> the expectation that they had, it's been really disappointing for them. So for us to win a London derby away from home the way we did it, I'm really happy for them as well. Of course, this three points puts you back in the mix, brings back the conviction, but also the fact that you've done it here. Will that help you in some of the huge games you've got coming up? Manchester United, of course, small matter of North London derby. If you've got this in your locker recently, will that help in those games? I think it will help because that gives you confidence and belief that you can do it um, at the biggest stage, away from home against the top teams in this league. And uh, hopefully they can believe more in themselves. Speaking of the top teams in this league, Man City trying to go back to the top of the table against Bright. Yeah, and a little bit of pressure on City. Liverpool doing so well yesterday in the right side that we know is always very well sold by Graham Potter. And this is probably the best chance of, of a tight first half, Bernardo Silva just manipulating the ball and Sanchez coming up with a decent save. So nil-nil at the break. Into the second half in a turnover in possession. How many times does this lead to a goal? City get the ball. De Bruyne does well to ride a couple of channel challenges. There's a bit of fortune here for Riyad Mahrez. As the ball comes through, you'll see De Bruyne is going to go through two or three players. But Riyad Mahrez has been so important to this Manchester City team. 23 goals now in all competitions. A club high gets City off to the start, start big money. Yeah, and Musty, then it was on for City. Yeah, and, and you can talk about Mahrez, you can talk about Phil Foden as well. The shot comes in here. Big deflection right there. Goalkeeper can't adjust to that. And quick as a flash, Man City are 2-0 up. But again... There's your win back in midfield. Kevin De Bruyne just feels the ball through to Bernardo Silva. And another player, another goal-scoring midfield player that's this season stepped up and got good numbers and great performances just steers it. Really good concentration there, Bernardo Silva, to make sure he finds the corner. And comfortable 3-0 Manchester City. City back to the top of the table. Everton trying to give themselves a little breathing room on the bottom three, taking on Leicester City, Musty. Well, this is the Newcastle, Newcastle. Crystal Palace yeah. first, and we'll go to... Palace with possession, St. Maximum does that a lot of times, runs across the line of defenders, gets his shot in. But Newcastle do go ahead, Bruno Guimaraes with the ball into Almiron, and it's good pace from Miguel Alm Almiron to get there, and he steadied himself. We've seen him get in these positions a number of times with his pace and his energy, but often doesn't have the right contact, doesn't hit the target. Here he does it beautifully. And the goal's only better by the celebration. Love a bit of that from Miggy as, as he scores his goal. Into the second half, Palace had a couple of chances courtesy of their top scorer in the league. Wolf Zaha's got 11 Premier League goals. He's looking to make that 12. The disappointment of that FA Cup semi-final, I think, was evident to see. Not quite at their sparkling best for Crystal Palace. But again, when the ball comes out to Zaha, trying to bend that to the fore. Close, he's a little unlucky. But that's now six straight wins for Newcastle and Eddie Howe. What a start, what a season they're having. Yeah, and it continues. All right, here is Everton and Leicester City, a crucial one for Everton. They fall behind early, though. They did, and uh, Leicester City get in behind here. Harvey Barnes, a player I really like, comes in from that left-hand side. He's got on with the goal. He's certainly improved his production there. There's Madison in behind. Iheanacho with the first attempt with his left foot, but it's blocked by Yeremina back in the back four for Everton, but it falls perfectly for Harvey Barnes, who makes it 1-0 to Leicester City. Chance here, though, for Everton. Well, Richarlison. Game's about Richarlison, and this is a great opportunity right here. It's like he's six yards out, actually on that line there, 
It's a good ball in from the outside area. Anthony Gordon has been superb this season for Everton. A little casual maybe from Richarlison, but what a great chance to, to equalise there. Yes, yeah, second half, he had another chance to equalise. Uh, he keeps going. This guy keeps going. Great spirit about him, great hunger to score goals and to do the right things and, and not let things get him down. Good, good battling qualities there and just the shot's a little too close to Casper Schmeichel who makes the save, but it does come good for this guy, Richarlison. Again, you see the clock there right into stoppage time. A long ball over the top, and Richarlison is just going to find a way there. It's just, not a great contact on the ball. Rondon there tries to control it. He goes under his foot, but Richarlison is ready. It's scrappy. It's deflected, but it's into the corner, and that could be a very important point for the Toffees. So we'll get to the bottom of the table here in a second. We start at the top. Manchester City returning to the top after 24 hours of second place. They had enough of that. They moved back one point above Liverpool. Six games remaining there. Arsenal level on points with their North London rivals and Tottenham in that race for fourth in Champions League football. Bottom half of the table looks like this. You mentioned Newcastle incredibly moves them up to 11th right now. They're sniffing the top half of the table. Everton's late equalizer makes it a four point gap now between them and 18th place Burnley. Burnley do play tomorrow. A win against Southampton would move them just one point behind the Toffees. And that was your Premier League update. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.